Welcome to Real Talk for Real Teachers. I'm Dr. Becky Bailey, the creator of Conscious Discipline, an expert in child development and education, and a lifelong teacher and learner. For those listening who are not aware of Conscious Discipline, it is an adult-first, comprehensive, trauma-informed, brain-based self-regulation program that combines three things often considered as separate. Discipline, social-emotional learning, and school culture are put together into one integrated system. I like to think of it as a big, giant, comprehensive resiliency program for both adults and children, as well as the community in which they live. Today we're going to talk about the shift from punishment to discipline in the United States and other parts of the world. Specifically, we're going to be, end up talking about a high school program with children with special needs in the Netherlands. Now, Conscious Discipline has offered alternatives for punishing children for misbehavior for almost 25 years. And the legal definition of punishment is the infliction of some kind of pain or loss upon a person for a misdeed. And there are many research downsides to punishment, whether that punishment is verbal or physical. And some of those are physical punishment seems to increase child aggression, increase antisocial behavior, lower intellectual achievements, enhance poor quality of parent-teacher-student relationships, and actually cause some mental health problems. The American Academy of Pediatrics encourages parents to use discipline strategies, which means to teach, instead of physical or verbal punishments to stop unwanted behaviors in children and teens. And this awareness is growing worldwide. A research study in Nigeria showed that punishment is negatively related to academics' performance. So as the punishment increases, academics continues to decline. The higher the punishment, the lower the academics. The number one biggest downfall for a society is that punishment does not teach internal controls of one's own behavior. Now, I call those, and most people do, self-regulation skills. The offender may learn to inhibit the punished response during surveillance. In other words, when someone's watching, I'm going to be good. But once surveillance ends, there is no internal control to keep our own behavior in line. So for a school, this means every teacher must manage every child's behavior. So for a society, this means every police officer must manage every citizen. So this process to me is unsustainable, regardless of our academic achievement or not. And in addition, our most vulnerable students, those with trauma or with disabilities, face corporal punishment at disproportionately high rates. And if you add race to this problem, it even gets more severe. In the United States, students of color with disabilities are punished more harshly than their peers. So today we have the pleasure of hearing about one school in the Netherlands and what they are doing to change things. And this regards to high school children with special needs. Join me and listen in. An interesting opportunity I have to be here with a man from the Netherlands. Uh, So would you introduce yourself and tell us where you work? All right, yes, my name is uh, Christian Baarsma. It's a Dutch name. And I work uh, near Rotterdam uh, on a high school for special needs. And the name of the school is Discovery College. Discovery College. Yes. So when what do you do? What were you hired to do there? What I do there, um, I started three years ago at that school uh, with a new project because um, there was a lot of fear at the school, a lot of energy, a lot of violence, a lot of feeling of unsafety. So they asked me to start a project based on conscious discipline um, in which we transfer, uh, transfer the punishment class to another system to connection and safety and empathy. Wow, and so let's Mm -hmm. just back up. So Mm -hmm. here you are all the way in the Netherlands. So Mm -hmm. how did you even hear about conscious discipline? Well, I had an interview at that school because I wanted to switch to another school. Mm -hmm. I was involved in another high school for many years. And well, 
um, they hired me and they asked me, we want you to do something with conscious discipline. And that was the first time I heard, I heard about conscious discipline. So, uh, well, I bought a book, uh, the book, uh, <laughs> Easy to Love, yes. Difficult to Discipline. It was very inspiring and I thought, all right, I can do this and uh, let's give it a try. So when you so you walk into a new school with mm -hmm. a new project, yes, and it was you only have, for me. Uh, what few days before you mm -hmm. find this out, and mm -hmm. so you're walking in there and you're going to change the school mm -hmm. in this particular mm -hmm. area from a punishment system, yes, to a, to a conscious discipline or a non-punitive system, yes, a non-punitive. So how did that? How did you start that even process? Well, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> quite funny. The first day I started there, I didn't know anybody except the people I spoke to and they asked me to introduce myself to the to the complete team and they weren't prepared of this so for <laughs> them it was all new and they didn't know what I came to do there so it was I for me it felt challenging yes and it felt like I had to prove myself yes so um, but after a few weeks Actually, uh, I noticed um, there was a shift going on. So, um, and then I felt more comfortable. And my principal, he gave me all the space I need, I needed to explore and to develop what we wanted to do. So that felt great. That, that is phenomenal, too, mm. because we're at uh, Conscious Discipline, the Advanced Institute, and mm. you're here sitting with me, and mm -hmm. so I have heard your presentation, I mm -hmm. have seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. And so, from you're kind of learning along as you're implementing, mm -hmm. right? So you were oh, yes. kind of studying, learning, and doing at the same time. Mm, yes. And, but what you came up with in your room, mm -hmm. uh, so tell us about the actual room first i mean so yes. what did you put in there and what was your goals well i transformed there was a punishment room yes. in this school and i transformed it in a connection room actually i thought it's better when a child um, is in the emotional state or even in the survival state um, his own teacher um, can help him i think that's better but sometimes they need to go out of the class so mm -hmm. i um well I changed this specific room into a connection room and to make it practical because we have a lot of children with autism. Um, we put lines on the floor in the, I call it the conscious discipline colors. Mm -hmm. So they know in which day they are and they can choose where they want to sit. Yes. And, and I have to be honest, uh, the first uh, period I was there at Discovery College, we had a lot, a lot, a lot of students um, entering my room in the red state mm -hmm. but we collect a lot of data a lot of data um, and now it's it's almost uh, it's almost zero uh, that they enter in uh, in the red state but they, they come in the, in the blue state so yeah. they are not okay and things are not going how they want it how they wanted it to be but they are willing to connect with us yeah, so, that's amazing. So, they, so, mm -hmm. so let me just sum mm -hmm. this up. So you have areas marked mm -hmm. with a kind of a red, yeah. a red yes. area and a blue, blue area and, and a green and a green area. Stu and so, as the ch as mm -hmm. the student, and these are how old are they? When they enter our school, they are twelve years, and they leave when they are eighteen years 18. old. Eighteen. So when they come in there, the student decides. Okay, mm -hmm. or, or the student goes to the area. So they're yes. going to go to red. They're going to go to blue, mm -hmm. and their survival state, or their emotional state, or the yes. executive state. So in a short amount of time, it seems like what mm -hmm. you're saying mm -hmm. is that you had a lot coming in the survival state. Oh, so yes. you had a lot of violence and destruction and throwing yes. things. And yes, and that was a challenge for me because at that time, few years ago, I was the only uh, the only person at school doing this work yes so and now uh, i coordinate a team of coaches so i'm not alone anymore and that's helpful yeah that's made a big difference mm -hmm. so now so the majority came in in red which was all this violence and throwing yes, and, and name calling and, and yeah and now words. now you're into the mm -hmm. emotional state most of the time most of the yes. time yes
So. And so how did, it, when you started teaching this to the, mm -hmm. your other colleagues, mm -hmm. was there resistance uh, or at first, or you had some that bought in and some that didn't? How did that go when you first started teaching? Uh, that's a interesting question. Uh, there, was, uh, uh, there was some resistance um, because we also uh, have at our school had a little bit have a reward system. Yes. So, and they are, we are used to that. And conscious discipline is another way of thinking about mm -hmm. rewarding and punishment, punishment systems. Yeah. So we had discussions. Yes. Every okay. day at the end of the day, discussions. So this, this child has, uh, has called names today. What, have, uh, what are we going to do with him? Mm -hmm. And I had thoughts about it, but they had thoughts about it as well. Yes. And it doesn't match always. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but three years later, um, well, I see and I feel that we are um, more together in this. And we, um, the teachers and I, the teachers and uh, my school, we have find each other. Yes. And we are busy um, to create a school family with the teachers first. Mm -hmm. So we can model this to our children. That's what we are doing now. Yes. And these are all children with special needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, you, so now you have a collaborative group mm -hmm. kind of oh, yes. working on how, yeah. how are we going to help this child mm -hmm. be successful mm -hmm. That's right. as opposed to punishing them for mm -hmm. whatever they've mm -hmm. done. And so that whole mindset shift mm -hmm. now uh, and do you believe it's made a big difference or, or can you tell the difference in the students, the parents and the teachers? Yeah, uh, yes, um, the teachers f are, are feeling safe. Mm -hmm. So that's so good if you, if you compare this with three years ago. So Correct. That's, that's really great. The, I think the children feel safe as well. But of course, they are special need kids, so things happen. Right, but because they feel safe, they um, um, they dare to find to find us mm -hmm. and to speak with us, and they don't feel ashamed. So I think this is this is helpful. So and, are the kids asking then for help more, or instead of acting out, will they try to get some assistance before mm -hmm. they get so out of control? Yes, yes, it's an interesting question. Um, a lot of children who um, who use the connection class, they, they choose it by their own. Sometimes their teachers help them by saying, uh, I uh, seen you're, you're frustrated. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's good for you <laughs> to go to the connection room to speak with one of the coaches. So, oh, uh, so, it's so, not they, a, so they can come voluntarily so if they feel yeah. like oh, they yes. need this they yes. just leave their classroom and come to you yes and then uh, sometimes the teachers would yes. suggest it yes these are wow. two possibilities and so how often do they come I mean we have 185 st uh, students and I think the uh, an average and it's I think it's a lot uh, the average is uh, 25 30 uh, students students at one day well and I we collect the, da the data mm -hmm. and well I have some students they come every day um, more times a day so and this is important for us because then we know this child needs more than what we can uh, what we can right. do for him I think so, yeah. yes well we have a lot of teachers um, they are really helpful one of our teachers um, lived in Aruba and he worked with uh, conscious discipline over there mm -hmm. so he knows a lot he, he does CD1 he knows a lot of conscious discipline so that's very helpful for us as well and he's a wow. great teacher yes so there's some kids that are coming over and over mm -hmm. do some kids when they come are, are they learning some strategies so mm -hmm. they don't come quite as often too mm -hmm. do you see that also uh, yes we see that also my my team and I uh, we try, we, uh, we have the conscious discipline, brain state model, um, mm -hmm. we put it on the wall in our room. Mm -hmm. And also the powers. Yeah. 
The interesting thing about our children is when they enter our room, they get interested in by what they see on yeah. the wall. So they ask us, well, what, is, what does this mean? So we explain how it works and we give them opportunities to handle their own emotions before they call us. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah, there's one boy, um, you, have a, you have a picture of him you yes. I gave yesterday. Um, he was, uh, he's a boy with ADHD and, and other problems, uh, very kind boy, but he entered our room f five or six times a day and uh, in a very emotional state. Mm -hmm. But now he learned, you make him one time a day mm -hmm. because for him it's, all, uh, it's also, he likes to see us. Oh so, yeah, bet, mm -hmm. yeah. We are connected. You bet. But now he's... Um, as a 13-year-old boy, he is sitting in his classroom and, he f and when he feels emotional, um, he takes his, uh, well, it's a toy, we call it Lego, you know? Mm -hmm. what, Lego, yes, yeah. He takes Lego and he goes play with Lego, you know, on a high school. Yes. But it comforts him mm -hmm. and it helps him to regulate and he, he don't need us. Yeah. It's so great. Mm. That's so great. Yeah. Thank you so much okay. for, You're welcome. for sharing with us and, and good luck Thank over there in the <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> yes, and we keep in touch. Okay. <laughs> wow, Christian, you stepped into a big role and a big job and you did it in a beautiful, beautiful way. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Way to go over there in the Netherlands. So what's Becky up to? Well, I'm preparing to speak to a large group of wonderful educators and community leaders at the Choctaw Nation, uh, an exciting opportunity. And so what are we celebrating? Well, most of our CD1 satellites are sold out, but there are a limited number of seats available. So if you're interested, call soon, but we are celebrating another year, another summer of wonderful opportunities for many, many people. And with that, until next time, I wish you well. For more episodes of Real Talk with Real Teachers by Dr. Becky Bailey, visit ConsciousDiscipline.com forward slash podcasts. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.